Top Fuel Nitro motorcycle fans enjoy this piece of history never seen before. You're taking a look at two individuals at the pinnacle of the sport, Larry Spiderman McBride and Dave Vantine in the year 2019. But this channel is also about keeping the legacy of the pioneers and the trailblazers alive. And in this extensive video, we are going to take you inside the private VHS collection of the late, great Brian Johnson from the UK who you see near Lane. This is absolute gold. Enjoy it. And we begin with two of the biggest names ever in motorcycle drag racing. In the right-hand lane, the far lane, that is arguably the greatest drag bike racer of all time, the one and only Elmer Trett. This is from an AMA Pro Star race at Atlanta Dragway in 1996. We're going to show you more than half a dozen runs. We're also going to celebrate Brian Johnson's Gainesville World Finals victory. It is the 20th anniversary of that. We're going to talk to Brian Johnson's brother. We're going to remember him. We're also, at the end of this video, going to take you to Brian Johnson's Hall of Fame induction speech. But right now, let's enjoy Elmer Trett and Brian Johnson from 1996. Oh, these two men so far ahead of their time. Elmer smokes the tire. Brian, 657, 213 wins the event. It's not often that anybody was able to turn the wind light on against the legendary Elmer Trett. Brian did it here. Clearly, that's why he made sure this VHS video was in a nice storage area where it would be preserved. Now let's take it back to another special moment for Johnson. This was 20 years ago. Gainesville World Finals. AMA Pro Star. Tony the Tiger Lang, Far Lane. Brian Johnson near Lane. The biggest, most illustrious drag race of the year. Gainesville, Florida. Watch the man from England go. He takes the win in front of this capacity crowd. 629. It was a pleasant flight home to England. Speaking of England, we were there and we spoke to Chris Johnson about what that win meant to his late brother. Taking a trip down memory lane with Chris Johnson, brother of the late, great Brian Johnson, top fuel motorcycle racer. Can you believe it is the 20th anniversary of Brian Johnson coming over to the States, Gainesville, Florida, and winning the AMA Pro Star Race against the great Tony Lang in the final. What do you remember about that? Well, I arranged the shipping. Uh, then the buck stopped with me because the container was late. It was delayed by US Customs. Everybody's bike was in there from the UK. We eventually got it there, but it was a horrible, a horrible situation. He got the bike out of the crate and he just stormed it. He just flew through the rounds. It was an amazing meeting. Um, I remember that uh, Ian King beat Larry in round two, I think, and then Brian shut him down in the next round. And eventually Brian beat Tony Lang in the final. Just a perfect end. How ecstatic and pleased was Brian? Oh, it was amazing. I mean, he went to the States fairly regularly and he was super competitive. Um, that was that was always his goal to win in the States. As you know, he won the number, won the number one plate in 1984. That's right. But when he built the second bike, he did amazingly well over there. But to win in Gainesville was uh, really special for him. And what's really amazing, and I've heard a lot of the Top Fuel motorcycle teams compliment Brian on this, some teams have 10, 12 guys. It was just Brian and Ann yep. over there, all the way from England, yep. competing with the best of the best, getting yep. it done. He had a couple of friends that came with him. Uh, he paid their way. There was no real major sponsorship. He built the bike by hand himself. Everything was just done by Brian. It was a small operation, and Very they, they made the most out of it. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. And talk to any of those guys from that era. They'll tell you how competitive he was. It's some truly great memories, isn't it? Absolutely. We miss them. Thanks a lot. We want to thank Chris Johnson for the memories and also for this never seen before footage from his late brother's private collection. Unfortunately, we lost Brian Johnson on April 13th, 2015. His wife, Ann, passed away shortly thereafter. We're going to get more into that story coming up in their Hall of Fame induction ceremony. But for now, let's enjoy some of this classic racing. It is so wonderful that this will live on after these racers have already sadly left us. Here comes Brian Johnson once again. This is Brian on a solo pass. What a beautiful motorcycle. As his brother mentioned moments ago, this thing was almost entirely hand-built 
in Brian's garage. And can you imagine the chore just getting one of these bikes to the United States from the UK? The containers, the shipping. Brian's brother mentioned how the bikes got held up at customs. It's not the easiest thing to pass through customs. A nitro methane burning, one of a kind, high horsepower motorcycle. But that's what these teams went through to come compete with the best of the best in the United States. There was nothing bigger or badder than AMA Pro Star. And if you guys have any stories about these racers, about these organizations, please share them below. If you were ever at any of these races, if you saw guys like Brian Johnson or Elmer Trett, please share a story below. Let's see what Brian can do on his solo shot here at Atlanta Dragway. Well, that is one way to cook a good year and put on one heck of a show. How about that? And shout out to Lewis Bloom. That is the voice of Lewis Bloom, who you see on the NHRA television shows. Lewis started as a motorcycle drag racing announcer, was the head man at AMA Pro Star behind the mic for a long, long time. Make sure you tag Lewis in this video. It was always great listening to him at the motorcycle races. And another pair of legends on the Yellow Mountain Magic Machine. That is Elmer Trett, recognized as the NHRA as one of the top 50 drivers of all time. Not riders, but drivers. Think about that for a second. All the legends in the four-wheel dominated NHRA, and they recognized Elmer as one of the top 50. He was the first to 200, the first to 210, the first to 220, and the first to 230. He is up against his son-in-law, Tony the Tiger Lang, another legend of the sport. Six forty-six, two thirteen for Elmer Trett. This is in nineteen ninety-six, guys. Six fifty-seven for Tony Lang. That would be considered impressive numbers today. Of course, Larry Spider-Man McBride has pushed the envelope. There's the late, great Jim McClure. Larry Spider-Man McBride has pushed the envelope, set the world record at 560. He did that in Rockingham in the fall of 2019. But to give you some insight into how close Larry Spider-Man McBride and that man, Elmer Trett, were to this day, Larry McBride will not go down the racetrack unless he is wearing an Elmer Trett t-shirt. Can you believe that? Think about that. We lost Elmer, sadly, at the 1996 NHRA U.S. Nationals. But his impact on the sport is still felt so immensely. This man was a true innovator, virtuoso, a master of two-wheeled motorcycle drag racing. He is sorely missed by the racing community and the friends and family who loved him and, and knew him well. The same goes for Brian Johnson. Elmer Trett's amazing 6.06 at the 1996 Pro Star Pingrel Thunder Nationals from Indianapolis is remembered as one of the greatest runs of all time. It would be three years later that Larry McBride would run the first ever five second drag bike run. And Larry will tell you to this day, I wasn't the first one. Elmer just let me have that run. And he said, Elmer was really ahead of me on my t-shirt. That's how much they looked up to this man. Chris Hand is in the near lane, another competitor who looked up dearly, greatly to Elmer Trett as a mentor, as a big brother, as a father figure. He meant so much to him all those years competing against him. Chris Hand still active today, does a great job with his wife Sharon. How about 672, 187 for Chris Hand alongside Elmer's 659. Chris Hand told a great story on the Cycle Drag YouTube channel. The first time he ever went in the sixes, the bike was tuned over the phone by Elmer Trett. Speaking of the Spider-Man, Larry McBride, here we go back to 1996. This is the motorcycle affectionately known as Blue, which Larry has since parked for his new bike, Star. Blue was the first ever in the five-second zone. 1999, looks like the Spider-Man's having some problems here. Yes, even back in 1996, these motorcycles were still incredibly difficult to keep everything together, make sure they were running properly. 
Larry Spider-Man McBride now chasing championship number 20 in the year 2019. The world record holder at 560, 263 miles an hour. You got to believe his mentors and friends, Elmer Trett, Brian Johnson, they would all be so proud of how he has carried on and how he has taken this sport to the next level with individuals like Dave Vantine, Jimmy Brantley, Mitch Brown, Sam Wills, Chris Hand still out there. Larry said when Elmer passed away, Elmer's widow Jackie came to Larry and said, it's up to you now. You have to carry on. You have to continue with this sport. For so many years, Elmer served not only as the leader, but also the promoter, the man who would go out and make sure the class had a strong footing in organizations and book match races. Looks like the Spider-Man overpowered the racetrack here. Let's take you to another Larry Spider-Man McBride run. I hope you guys are enjoying this footage from the vault. If you are a drag bike fanatic like us, a drag racing historian, this is just golden footage that we have to preserve. It's so special to put it on the Cycle Drag channel. Here comes another individual, Ron Webb, another legend of the sport. Webb from Anchorage, Alaska, campaigned the famous fire and ice out of motorcycles unlimited the great late great carl alfred who's not with us anymore a ginormous part of that team there's the late great carl right there oh and what a show guys isn't it amazing 1996 all these years later I would still give anything to see these two line up against each other on those very same motorcycles. There's nothing like the sound of top fuel motorcycles completing side-by-side -side burnouts. A little background about Ron Webb. He went a career best 604 in Gainesville, Florida. I was there for that run. It was absolutely beautiful. Ron decided to retire from the sport after the passing of Carl. That motorcycle was sold to Todd Leatherman, who now runs it in the dirt. He is a dirt drag racer, active on Facebook. The motorcycle is still out there every once in a while. We try to twist Todd's arm to, hey man, set that thing up for the asphalt and bring it back. Here we go, Spider-Man McBride and Ron Webb. Spider-Man out of Newport News, Virginia. His crew chief and brother, Steve McBride, there with him. Oh, Spider-Man having problems. How about Ron Webb on a pass? 671, 177 miles an hour. Man, the promoter in me would have loved to have sold this event. You got a lot of competitive motorcycles in the six second zone. And a big tip of the cap to AMA Pro Star, president, owner, Keith Scooter Kaiser, brother of legend Terry Kaiser. Make sure you send Keith Kaiser a thank you for what he did with this organization from 1989 on. I'm telling you, there was nothing bigger or badder than Pro Star in terms of professional motorcycle drag racing. He had factory involvement, he had top fuel teams from all around the world competing. As it looks like now we're set for a matchup of Tony the Tiger Lang, near Lang, Chris Hand, far Lane. Tony the Tiger is another great story too. He would go on to become a five-time champion. What an amazing talent with backing from MTC and Schnitz Racing. Larry Spiderman, McBride, and Tony Lang produced a wonderful rivalry in the late 90s. You never know, knew who was going to win, and it was great for kids too because this is before Tony adopted the, the Tiger gimmick. But in the late 90s, you had the Spider-Man up against the Tiger. Kids loved it. The promoter loved it. Speaking of promoters and talking about how Elmer Trett was a promoter, the story that I got is that Tony Lang initially wanted to go into Funny Bike. And Elmer Trett said, listen, go to Top Fuel. I'll buy you your first drum of nitro. Those are the types of things that Elmer would do to keep his class healthy, to make sure they had enough bikes to put a show on. And Brian Johnson was the same way. 
How about a 636, 213, Tony Lang, you're a bad man. Man, guys, that's 1996. Here's some food for thought. Mitch Brown won the World Finals in 2018 running 620s because you never know who's going to smoke a tire in top fuel. Tony Lang is almost there in the year 1996. That's how ahead of the curve these guys were. Looks like we've got an elimination matchup coming up. Elmer Trett taking on Ron Webb. Man, what I wouldn't give to have a conversation with, with Elmer Trett. I was lucky as a young boy, I was first exposed to motorcycle drag racing at ADCO, New Jersey. It was always the biggest race of the year, the U.S. Nationals in September. Elmer was there, got to get his autograph a few times, got to observe him, take some VHS videos, but I was so young. I never got to have the conversation that I would like to have with Elmer right now. I'd love to sit down to dinner or a couple beverages with Elmer Trett and Brian Johnson. Could you imagine that? We would do some bench racing for sure. Such a beautiful motorcycle. This would be just months before Elmer would tragically pass away at the NHRA US Nationals. Labor Day weekend, 1996. Elmer puts a 645. Look at the speed, 225. Larry McBride told me Elmer was always known as the king of speed, and this was his house. Atlanta Dragway was his home track. Again, guys, I gotta emphasize, 1996. Running 225 on a fuel bike today is still impressive. No, it's not a record anymore, but it's still impressive. These guys were so far ahead of their time. Here comes Brian Johnson once again. And remember, stay with us because we are going to give you Brian's Hall of Fame induction speech from the British Drag Racing Hall of Fame at the end of this video. I hope you guys are enjoying this trip down memory lane. We are asking you, if you know anything about any of these motorcycles or any of these competitors, comment below. Share with anybody who might be interested. I'd love to hear some more stories from over in the UK as well. It was great to go to Santa Pod this past year. And another story from Scooter Kaiser, he, he told me that over in the UK, Brian Johnson was their Elmer Trett. That's how revered and respected Brian Johnson was over in Europe. He was quite respected over here in the United States as well. Looks like Brian was just going to break the beam there and save it. Elmer Trett, his lovely wife Jackie Trett alongside him, and Tony Lang who would marry Elmer's daughter. Can you believe that? It's funny, the human experiment and sometimes how things work out when people are close to each other. These two were bitter rivals on the racetrack and they end up being family members. The Trett family, just wonderful family all around. Got to meet both of Elmer's daughters. They are both wonderful people. His entire family. I just listen to how crisp these bikes are. The John Force-esque burnouts. What a show they're putting on in 1996. Clearly, we're getting a glimpse into what AMA Pro Star President Keith Scooter Kaiser thought. Because in this day and age, I can tell you, Having worn that promoter hat, a lot of people don't want to deal with the expense of top fuel motorcycle. They say, is the ROI there? Is the return on investment there? Scooter knew he could sell this show to the public. Here we go. All side by side. Tony out in front. Here comes Elmer. Elmer 646, 213. Wow. Impressive. A 657 for Lang. Elmer gets around him. Oh, and let us not forget, we still have the Spider Man, Larry McBride, taking on Brian Johnson. This one will be for a trip to the finals. This 
Spider-Man waiting patiently, showing great sportsmanship as always. We know that Elmer advanced from one half of the bracket. Will it be the Spider-Man? Will it be Brian Johnson? Gosh, these fields were so tough back then. No easy rounds whatsoever. I could watch that all day long. I hope you were there for this. I was. I know 1996, I got to see a few of these races live. ADCO, New Jersey. Didn't get to attend my first Gainesville World's Finals until 2001, but that was always a great show. I'll tell you, at ADCO, New Jersey, there was just nothing like two high horsepower top fuel motorcycles roaring out of the burnout box side by side. Such a wonderful show, such great memories. It's a reason why this channel exists. If I didn't fall in love with this sport as a kid, cycle drag would have never existed. So I want to thank these great legends and heroes. As we said before, we got to tip our cap to that man right there, Larry Spider-Man McBride. He's continued to push the envelope when bike count went down to just, for many years, it was just Larry McBride and Chris Hand. After the passing of Elmer Trett, the sport was in big trouble. And Larry and his brother Steve and a lot of other great people have helped this sport carry on with Dave Van Tines, Jimmy Brantley's, Mitch Brown, Sam Wills. Chris Hand is still out there. We got to show our appreciation and respect to Chris Hand. Brian Johnson, Spider-Man McBride, winner to face Elmer Trett in the final. Oh, Spider-Man out of shape. Win light in a close one to the man from the UK. A 650-212 does the job. Larry McBride, 662. Wow, well, and can you believe all these years later, Larry is a full second quicker than that pass right there. Set the world record. Rockingham, North Carolina, October 2019. 560. Many expecting Larry to go even quicker here soon. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. A final between these two late legends. We miss them so dearly. Brian Johnson near lane. Elmer Trett far lane. Keep this in mind about Elmer Trett too, that there were top fuel car teams that consulted with him for knowledge and data. That's how respected he was. And I'm sure the same thing happened with Brian Johnson over in the UK. This is golden classic footage. Again, please share with a motorcycle drag racing fanatic. Where else can you see arguably the greatest American drag bike racer of all time up against arguably the greatest European motorcycle drag racer of all time. Final round showdown. Here we go, Atlanta 96, top fuel. Oh, looks like a whole shot. Brian Elmer coming out the back door, smokes the tire, top end of the racetrack. Brian Johnson comes home with the win. 657, 213 miles an hour. Wow. Cycle Drag Nation, Cycle Drag Universe, I hope you're enjoying this trip down memory lane like we are. That was Atlanta 1996. Let's show you a few other clips from Brian's private collection. As you can see, straight off the VHS. This is Brian warming up the motorcycle, fresh out of the container. Now I want to show you something before we get into Brian's induction speech, which I hope you stick around for. Check this out. When Brian retired from the sport, he became a videographer. And there's the Spider-Man, Larry McBride. This is in the year 2002. Brian Johnson came over and he said, if I'm not going to race anymore, my passion is now going to be documenting and recording this sport. His goal was to put every single AMA Pro Star race on VHS. I know three or four of them, I believe, were released. I think you can still find them on eBay. Some of us were lucky enough to buy a copy. Unfortunately, 
uh, due to, I believe, lack of funding, Brian never put together the last four races. That's Brian doing the voiceover. 626 for Spider-Man. So how about that? I mean, Brian Johnson was cycle drag before cycle drag was. He had the idea. So it's fulfilling that we can carry on this great man's legacy. Wonderful man. Brian Johnson actually offered me an opportunity to come over to England. I was, I was a freshman in college. He wanted me to come over and do the voiceover on this show. Here's Jimmy Brantley, Jimmy the Hulk. He ended up buying Brian Johnson's bike. And guess what? Jimmy Brantley, second man in the five-second zone, took a hiatus, but he's ready to return. Larry Spiderman McBride is building him a brand-new motorcycle. Everything coming full circle here for 2020. There's Chris Hand. Got to love the commentary, Brian. God, I wish Brian was still here because I know Brian and I would probably be teamed up on everything that I do on this Cycle Drag channel. We would probably be putting together races together, doing the voiceover together. I'm sure we'll be tuning up for the next round. This was some great stuff. As I said, get your hands on, on one of these copies if you can. There's Tommy Smith. That's a former Elmer Trett motorcycle. And this is Atlanta Dragway once again, 2002. What we're going to take you to after this run, too, is something that I had the great pleasure of doing, and that is inducting Brian and Ann Johnson into the British Drag Racing Hall of Fame in 2015, one year after their unfortunate passing. Let's take you to that speech. One of Brian's brothers, Chris, is with us tonight, along with his wife, Jane. So I know you're here, so I've been talking to you for a lot of the evening. Welcome, Chris and Jane. As Brian was an international star, we have our CycleDrag.com editor and American TV network broadcaster, Jack Capella, to say a few words. Jack, would you like to come and join me on the stage? <laughs> Jack was the man who sort of handled the bench racing this afternoon, which was full of fun and laughter and jollity for everybody. Over to you, Jack. Well, thanks so much for having me. I'm having a wonderful time. I just think that this is such a great event. Um, it's so great to be around people who are passionate about racing, and I, I think it's a great job. I'd like to give one more round of applause to everybody who put this event on for just being such a fantastic <clears throat> Well, in my time in drag racing, which hasn't been as long as, as some of the great veterans out there, I hope to keep going. I've been able to announce a few races. I've written articles, and I'm also the editor of the website. And one of the hardest uh, realizations getting close to drag racing is it seems some of our legends and some of our heroes seem to leave this world just as quickly as they blasted down the quarter mile. And I, I sit here today in a surreal moment for me, realizing how quickly time passes because just one year ago at this event, Brian Johnson and Ann Johnson sat here and supported this organization like they always did. Sadly, they're both gone here today, but the legacy they leave behind is one of great love for not only the sport, but a great love for one another. Brian Johnson's career started on a 750cc Honda. It wasn't long before the desire for speed and the desire to go faster would take him into pro stock motorcycle. And by 1981, Brian Johnson became the first European rider to record an eight second elapsed time on a pro stock motorcycle. Now, as all of you speed addicts out there can appreciate, it wasn't long before he would take another step up. That's when Brian decided to trade the gasoline for the nitro and enter the unforgiving, daunting world of top fuel motorcycle, one that only a handful of individuals even dare to enter. Well, he made that transition with ease as well because Brian Johnson became a champion not only here in the UK, but in 1984, Brian and Ann Johnson traveled to the United States and they won an IDBA championship amongst some of the greatest riders the sport has to offer. Larry McBride, Sam Wills, and maybe a name that you've heard of, Elmer Trett, who many consider to be the greatest drag bike racer ever. Well, speaking of Trett, I talked to a promoter who spent a lot of time with Trett and Johnson, and he told me that there's no doubt about it, Brian Johnson 
was the UK's Elmer Trett. Brian Johnson was the man here. He was revered, respected, and he was the man who certainly knew how to go fast. But right behind him, every step of the way, was his loving and caring wife, Anne. She was there for Brian, and boy, they, they, she was one in a million. That's what some of the guys tell me about her, because when I say she was there, she wasn't the one to help push around the bike or ride the scooter. She was up to her elbows in grease, changing motors, changing clutches. And as you know, on motorcycles, there's no reverse gear. Anne was the reverse gear. Roland Stewart's here. He's a crewman for the Spider-Man McBride. He knows what kind of incredible Herculean effort it takes. It takes four guys minimum. Ian King can attest to that. He's a champion over here. He has a very, very hefty crew. Larry McBride told me Ann and Brian did it all by themselves. And that is mind boggling to him that a husband and wife could travel over to the United States from England and do it all by themselves. In 1991, Brian set a national record of 661. In 1999, he won the illustrious World Finals with a lapse time of 629. As usual, Ann watched on with delight. Johnson retired from racing at the end of the 2001 season, and almost 15 years later, his career best, 610 at 234 miles an hour, would still be competitive today and still has him in the top 20 riders of all time in terms of quickest speeds. That's just how ahead of the curve he was. In 2002, after he retired, he loved drag racing so much, he realized, hey, I can't stay away. He came back over to the States to film the AMA Pro Star Series. This was the first time I really got to interact with Brian. I remember one of those days, drag racers know these days well, it was an 8 a.m. to midnight type day. Brian was covered with sweat. His face had rubber all over it from being in the burnout box. What many might consider a miserable day. Walked up to Brian, he said, oh, great day, great day. And guess who was right there with him, taking time code, taking notes? Ann. No matter what Brian did, Ann was right there by his side. Brian was inducted into this Hall of Fame right here in 2008, certainly rightfully so. You know, this trip means a lot to me because there's only been one man to ever offer to bring me to England, and that man is Brian Johnson. That was when Brian wanted me to do the voiceover for his series. Unfortunately, there were some, um, uh, some sponsors who backed out the last minute. We never got to quite make the trip happen. So it means a lot to me to be here for him now in one way or another. Brian passed away April 13th, oddly enough, while at the hospital caring for his wife. The way that Anne exited this world, I view as perhaps a bit symbolic. Anne passed away shortly thereafter on May 5th, one hour before her husband's funeral. Maybe it was part of divine intervention. Maybe it was a sign the two just couldn't bear or didn't want to live apart. Nonetheless, Brian Johnson and Ann Johnson will be remembered as one of the greatest teams of all time. May God bless them, and may God bless you. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to subscribe to Cycle Drag on YouTube, like CycleDrag.com on Facebook, and we will keep promoting fast motorcycles all over the world. We really appreciate it. Thanks for all the comments. Thanks for the feedback. If you know any friends who might enjoy this channel as well, please refer them. We'll keep it growing. If you have any suggestions for us, please leave that in the comments as well. Thanks so much, guys. If you see me at the races, Get one of these stickers. I got one for you. Subscribe to Cycle Drag on YouTube. Like CycleDrag.com on Facebook. Thanks so much. And thank you to Chris Johnson for sharing this great footage with us. I really hope you guys enjoyed this look back at history and some of the all-time greats. God bless Elmer. God bless Brian. God bless Big Carl and everybody else we have lost. Let's keep this thing rolling. Let's keep drag bike racing alive and well. Thank you so much for your shares, likes, comments, and support on this channel. You are doing your part to give exposure to these greats all over the world. Thanks so much, guys. We'll keep it coming. Please leave us your feedback.